In the next video, we're going to see the fundamental theorem of Markov chains, which, as you might guess from the name, is pretty fundamental. But before we can state the fundamental theorem of Markov chains, we're going to need a few definitions. So in this video, we'll see a few useful definitions about Markov chains. Let's start with the definition of an irreducible Markov chain. We say that a time homogeneous Markov chain, in this lecture, imagine every Markov chain is time homogeneous, x0, x1, x2, and so on, is irreducible if for all pairs of states i and j, the sum over all t greater than or equal to zero of the probability that x sub t is equal to j conditioned on x sub zero being equal to i is strictly greater than zero. In other words, the chain is irreducible if for any states i and j, the probability of eventually getting to j if you start at state i is greater than zero. For example, this chain here is irreducible. That's because for any one of these three states, there's some positive probability that we'll eventually get to any other state. On the other hand, this Markov chain over here is not irreducible. That's because there's zero probability of getting to state B if we started in state C, for example. Our next definition is that of transient and recurrent states. In a Markov chain, every state can be classified as either transient or recurrent. To see what these mean, define Ri as follows. R sub i is going to be the sum over all t greater than or equal to 1 of the probability that x sub t is equal to i and x sub s is not equal to i for any s strictly less than t, conditioned on x sub 0 being equal to i. This is a bunch of symbols, but intuitively, this is the probability that if we start the chain at i, we first return to state i after t steps. Thus, when we sum all of these over all t greater than or equal to 1, this is the probability that we ever return to state i, conditioned on starting in state i. Given this definition, we say that a state is transient if r sub i is strictly less than 1, aka if there's some probability that we will never return to that state, and we say that a state is recurrent if r sub i is equal to 1, aka the probability that we eventually return to that state is 1. We can make a few observations about transient and recurrent states. First, let's consider the number of times that we visit a transient state in expectation. So by definition, the probability that we never return to a transient state i is equal to 1 minus ri, where ri is as defined on the previous slide. And so that implies that the expected number of times we visit i, that is, the expected number of times we visit i before we never return, is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus ri. That's because this, the number of times we visit i, is a geometric random variable. Basically, every time we visit i, we're going to flip a 1 minus ri biased coin, and if we get heads, we're never going to return. And so this is just asking what's the expected number of times we have to flip that coin before we never return. And that's just 1 over the probability of coming up heads. It also makes sense to ask about the expected time between visits to a state. That is, what is the expectation of the minimum t such that xt is equal to i conditioned on x0 being equal to i? And here, this is the minimum over all t greater than or equal to 1. If the state i is transient, then you can check that this is infinity. 
that is, with some positive probability, we're going to leave state i and never come back, and then the amount of time until we come back is infinity, so the expectation is infinite. On the other hand, if the Markov chain is finite, meaning that it has a finite number of states, then state i is recurrent if and only if this expected number of time steps between visits is finite. On the other hand, if the Markov chain is infinite, meaning that it has an infinite number of states, well, then something different might happen. To see how this might play out, let's look at an example. So here's an example of an infinite Markov chain. It has infinitely many states labeled negative infinity up to positive infinity. And at any state i, the probability of going to i plus 1 is 1 half, and the probability of going to i minus 1 is 1 half. This is really similar to the Markov chain that we studied when we analyzed a randomized algorithm for TUSAT in an earlier video. The difference is that it also goes off to negative infinity as well as positive infinity. In this Markov chain, I claim that state 0 is recurrent. To see why, let's recall our analysis of the randomized algorithm for TUSAT. If you remember, what we showed is that for all t, the probability that there exists some t prime in t plus 1 dot 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 up to t plus 2n squared, so that the absolute value of x sub t prime minus x sub t is greater than or equal to n, was greater than or equal to 1 half. That is, if we start at some point t, and we wander around for like 2n squared steps, then with pretty decent probability, we'll have wandered at least n away from where we started. What that means for this example is that no matter how far out you get, let's say n, there's always some decent probability of returning to zero. In particular, the probability that you return to zero after 2n squared steps is greater than or equal to a quarter. The reason for a fourth here rather than a half is because it's equally likely that we would wander off in the other direction instead of back to zero. So I claim that this implies that the probability that we never return to zero is in fact equal to zero, aka state zero is recurrent. To see why this is the case, let's suppose that you're at state n here. Now if we walk for 2n squared steps, we can think of this like flipping a 1 fourth biased coin. With probability of fourth, we're going to hit zero, in which case we'll be done. And with probability 3 fourths, we'll wander around for like 2n squared steps and never hit zero. Let's say in that case we end up at some n prime. At this point, we're going to flip our one-fourth biased coin again, and we'll walk around now for two times n prime squared steps. Again, with probability one-fourth, we'll come back to zero, while with probability three-fourths, we'll wander around for a little while two n prime squared steps and end up somewhere else, say n double prime. We're going to re keep repeating this again and again and again. The probability that we never return to zero throughout this entire process is at most the probability that a one-fourth biased coin never comes up heads. But that probability is just three-fourths times three-fourths times three-fourths times three-fourths times three-fourths dot 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 all the way up to infinity, which is zero. If I flip a one-fourth biased coin again and again and again and again, the probability that I never see heads is zero. Therefore, the probability that I never return to zero in this random walk is zero. This example is sometimes called the gambler's ruin. That is, if a gambler keeps on betting with 50% odds of either winning a dollar or losing a dollar, then this analysis shows that with probability one, the gambler will eventually go broke. That is, they're going to end up with zero dollars. <laughs>
turns out, though, in this case, actually the expected amount of time to return to zero is infinite. This doesn't violate the observation we had on the previous slide because this is an infinite Markov chain. We're not going to analyze this now, but we might do it in a future video. Going back to our gambler, that means that while with probability one, they will eventually go broke, in expectation, it will take them infinitely long to go broke. So perhaps they're ruined not because they go broke, but just because they spend so much time gambling. Our next definition is that of a periodic Markov chain. So we say that a Markov chain x0, x1, dot, 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 is periodic if there exists a state i so that the GCD of the set of all t's, so that the probability that xt equals i conditioned on x0 equals i is strictly greater than zero, that the GCD of this set is not equal to one. So let's break that down. So GCD here means greatest common divisor. And this set, this is just the set of all times t, so that it's possible for x sub t to be equal to i, given that we started the walk in i. And we're saying that the GCD of this set should not be equal to 1. Here's an example of a periodic chain. It's the same chain that we just saw in the previous slide. To see why, let's consider this set for i equals 0. So this is the set of all t, such that the probability that x sub t is equal to 0, given that x0 was equal to 0, is strictly greater than 0. So intuitively, this is the set of all times t, so that it's possible if we started in state 0 to be in state 0 at time t. So what is that set? Well, certainly if we start at 0 in time 0, then we can be in 0 at time 0. So this set includes 0. If we start at 0 in time 0, then it's possible, for example, by doing this, that we could be back in 0 at time 2. Or we could do something like this and be back at 0 in time 4, and so on. But it's impossible if we start at 0 at time 0 to be back at 0 at time t for some odd t. That's because this graph here, this underlying graph, is bipartite. So this set is just all of the even numbers. And what is the greatest common divisor of all of the even numbers? Well, it's 2. So GCD of this set is equal to 2. 2, notably, is not equal to 1. So therefore, this chain is periodic. If a Markov chain is not periodic, we say it's aperiodic. A useful fact is that any irreducible Markov chain that has at least one self-loop is aperiodic. Here by self-loop, I just mean something like this. Here's a quick proof of this fact. Suppose there's a self-loop at some state j. So maybe the picture looks like this. Here's our state i that we're interested in. Here's our state j, and it's got some self-loop. Because the Markov chain is irreducible by assumption, there's some path that gets us from i to j. Let's say this path has length y. So then what is the set of all t's such that the probability that x sub t is equal to i given that x0 was equal to i. Well, it contains the lengths of all of the paths that look like this, the ones that traverse this path of length y, and then go around this loop as many times as it feels like, and then goes back. So that means that it contains 2y, 2y plus 1, 2y plus 2, dot, 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 and so on. In particular, the GCD of this set is 1. Since this works for any i, by definition, the Markov chain is aperiodic.
Finally, let's define the notion of a stationary distribution. Suppose that pi is a distribution on the states of a Markov chain, x0, x1, and so on. And suppose that the Markov chain has transition matrix P. If pi is the distribution of x sub t, then we saw in a previous video that pi times p is going to give us the distribution on x sub t plus 1. Recall here that we're thinking of pi as both a distribution and as a vector. That is, the ith component of this vector is the probability of being in state i. We say that pi is a stationary distribution for this Markov chain if pi times p is just equal to itself. That is, it's a stationary distribution if, if we're in this distribution pi and we take one more step of the Markov chain, we're still going to be in the distribution pi. Here's a quick example. Consider this chain here. The transition matrix for this chain happens to look like this. And I claim that a stationary distribution is given by pi equal to 4 over 7, 2 over 7, 1 over 7. To see this, we can just verify that 4 sevenths, 2 sevenths, 1 seventh times this matrix is equal to itself. And indeed, that is the case. So if we look at the first component, that'll be this vector dotted with this vector. That's 2 sevenths plus 1 seventh plus 1 seventh, which is 4 sevenths. The next component is this vector dotted with this vector, which is 2 sevenths. And the last component is this vector dot with this vector, which is 1 seventh. So this is the same as this, and indeed this is a stationary distribution. Check. To recap, we saw a lot of definitions. An irreducible Markov chain is one where you can get from any state to any other state. A state is transient if there's some probability that we never return to it and a state is recurrent if we will return to it with probability 1. We say that a Markov chain is periodic if there's some state where we can only return to it on multiples of d steps for some d that's strictly greater than 1. And a stationary distribution is a distribution that stays the same as the Markov chain progresses. That's it for this video. In the next video, we will use some of these definitions to state and use the fundamental theorem of Markov chains. Thanks for watching.